Hey everybody, how's it going? This is Doug uh, from Trigger King RC. I'm on here and joined by Josh Rhodes, who is going to be my co-host for this. Oh, yeah. uh, this is the first first ever episode of Pull and Trigger. Um, here we're going to do on the Trigger King channel. And we, I've thought about doing this for a while, and uh, Josh and I talk, and we want to do it. So what we're going to start doing here, guys, it's sort of like a video podcast. We hope to go weekly, and we're going to use a, a subject, a specific subject. Today we're going to talk about the Lozy LMT and our spec class, which we are going to announce on this, what we're going to do for the summer here, uh, coming up racing series. And then we're going to take some Q&As as well. And I just want to say right off the bat, if you do have a question for us that you'd like to see us address on this show, preferably RC monster truck related, but I know we plan to eventually have guests and other things that are more full-size monster truck. Mm -hmm. If you have anything monster truck, triggerkingrc at gmail.com. You can also leave a comment uh, below here. We'll check it out or our community tab on YouTube. So, uh, Josh, you want to introduce yourself here to the folks who don't know who you are? Uh, my name is Josh Rhodes. Uh, I've competed in Trigger King since the beginning. Uh, you can follow me if you'd like. Follow my RC escapades on Josh Rhodes RC Racing on Facebook, as well as Josh Dig Rhodes on Instagram, as well as a new venture that Doug was actually just part of. We recorded right before we started this. Uh, my podcast called the Retro Monster Truck Review, which covers nothing but old school monster truck racing, where two guys just sit down and have fun and talk about old school monster trucks. And I'm happy to be doing this as well. We get to talk about the newest vehicle out on the market, which I believe a lot of people are still calling the Holy Grail. Well, we'll talk about that because <laughs> there's some there's some things I do want to talk about in regards yeah. to that. And uh, yeah, Josh, you guys check out his podcast. I was just on it, um, you know, a little behind the scenes recording of it we did before this and uh, talked about an old school monster truck race that was a lot of fun. It was a blast to talk about it. So definitely check that out, with, uh, you know, for Josh. And um, thank you for doing this, by the way. I'm happy you're going to be hosting this with me so we can talk RC monster trucks. You know, Josh and I have raced each other a million times, um, you know, on the racetrack. You guys, you know, I laugh that whenever I said, uh, introduce yourself, Josh, I think at this point, more people know who you are on this <laughs> channel than I do or uh, than, than about me. Um, but yeah, so today let's just get into this. Um, we're going to talk about the Losi LMT. We did a review of it on this channel um, and it went live whenever, um, the media embargo went up on the, <clears throat> excuse me on the truck it was mid-november i've had mine now for i mean almost two months i know over two months i guess um josh you just picked up yours correct you have yeah, a roller. i got two rollers uh eventually i'm going to have a rtr on the way for the spec class that we're going to be talking about here in a little bit same here mine is uh it was the son of a digger you saw it as the the one that we reviewed and actually on Big Squid RC, I guess I should say, if you're unfamiliar with me, I, I do the Trigger King tech stuff here and some of the other stuff on the channel, but um, I, uh, I'm i the Monster Truck columnist for BigSquidRC.com. I write a weekly column, Monster Truck Madness, and actually I do some reviews over there too, and the written review of the Lozy LMT, I headed that up and did that in tandem with our video review on the Trigger King channel, so I try and do things um, with Trigger King and, and over at BigSquidRC.com, so check me out over there. Um, Let's just talk about the Lozy LMT spec class first, because uh, I think that some of our discussion is going to be around that. And yes, um, Trigger King RC, we are announcing that we are going to run a Lozy spec class. I will put the rules. We have a page up um, for the rules, but I'm going to put that in the in the uh, link below here so you can check it out and uh, on the TriggerKingRC.com website. And the big thing with this, the spec class is you're gonna see it this summer. We're launching it when Trigger King gets back to racing. I know that we haven't actually done, there hasn't been much racing you've seen on this channel in a little while here, because we haven't ran an event since when, October? Josh, mm -hmm. I think it was the end of October, we did our season end. Yep. Yeah, and it's been a problem to find an indoor event. It's been a couple things. It's, you know, our normal places with COVID right now, it's tougher to get an indoor venue. And a few of us just kind of needed a, a break to recharge. I know that Trigger King pretty much has run nonstop almost every month since 2014, which is crazy thinking about it. Mm -hmm. And I know, um, you know, Bob and Chris and a couple of the other guys, we, John, we just, we decided to take a little break, uh, get ready for the a big summer season. So that's what we have, we've done, actually. We've gotten oh. ready. We're going to do, what was that, Josh? I, my dog just decided she was going to bark. I'm start no, some. Sorry. No, sorry. Uh, I'm actually pulling up on our, our website here. I'll do a share so we can kind of go through the rules. But the whole idea with this spec class, um, what we're trying to do here is make it so, you know, a person can just kind of open the box 
and race. And there's never been a radio control solid axle monster truck where that's really been possible. And I know some people will point to, you know, the SMT 10, which is fair. And but another thing they may point to is the old NRC TPA class, which was the box stock class where you would pull out a clod buster and that was what you ran, or you'd pull out a ground pounder and that's what you ran. Same instance with the SMT. I believe they just allowed you to put like renegade tires on it or something like that. So it equaled the 2.6 size. Yes. And uh, you know what? I will just share real fast here. I'll do a screen share. We're doing this over Zoom. Josh and I hopefully will be able to do this in person uh, sometimes, but right now that's, that's not going to work. Um, this is actually on the Trigger King website. We'll just kind of go over the rules that we've decided to do for this. So you have the LMT spec class. The idea, again, is you can just pull it out of the box. You have to keep things stock as it is with the ready to run, minus a couple things. You can change the body and you can change, you can remove the cage. We thought about leaving that where you couldn't mess with the cage, but the problem is all bodies just won't fit it. And we like to have our unique you know, our unique looks to our trucks. Unique, unique look and everything. Plus, we don't want a bunch of son of a digger versus grave digger matchups here. Exactly. There's got to be something visual, right? It's one thing to race similar trucks, but you got to have the creativity on it. And right now, there's just not a lot of bodies that, I, that necessarily fit that for sure. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other things you can change is the oil on this truck. The truck has uh, three oil differentials, your front, rear, and the center. You can change oil on that. You can change your shock oil as well. Um, just to, to tune it up a little bit, you can change your shock springs. Uh, just if, again, if you want different damping, you can change the pinion if you want to gear it a little bit different. Radio, or, <clears throat> excuse me, your radio or receiver, because a lot of guys, you know, want to run on that specific radio. That's fine. You're not really, not a massive competitive advantage. It's just some guys don't want the ready to run one. And you can change your battery connectors to whatever batteries you run, because the LMT comes with, I think, EC5, if I remember right. Uh, a lot of guys run Deans or Traxxas plugs, whatever. We don't care. You can change that. Um, we're going to li limit it to two cell. And the reason even though it's a perfectly three cell capable truck. Josh, I'll let you chime in, chime in here. I'm not, I don't mean to railroad this, um, but we're doing it with two cell because we've all felt like on two cell, the truck behaves most like a full size monster truck. Mm -hmm. um, it feels heavy. It doesn't have quite the power that the three cell does. Well, when you put three cell in it, the truck feels overpowered, which is yeah. fun, but it feels a little more RC monster truck versus it seems to react really you know, on two cell, it seems to react pretty similar to how a full size monster truck does, in my yeah. opinion, in, in our guy's opinion, too. I mean, Josh, you, I, I agree with you 100 percent. I drew I got to test drive the truck back uh, been a few months ago now, but I took a visit out to the diggers dungeon and uh, paid a visit with Adam Anderson. Got to drive it out at his place on his little scale track out there. He had it on 2S and it's literally the most realistic feel that I've ever had behind the wheel of an RC truck. Uh, honestly. With everything that we have listed there, I really don't think they have to do much when they pull the truck out of the box, other than if they want to run, say, uh, with me, I'm going to be running either a bad company or maybe a Bigfoot in the uh, the scale or in this L&T scale class here that we've got going on, spec class. But uh, yeah, uh, I mean, you don't have to do much. The truck, I mean, Aaron Jaynes, actually, I read a comment from him here a little while back, and he, he has the beast truck in our series. It's probably the best landing truck that we have in the entire series between all the classes. Mm -hmm. You can launch this thing 30, 40 feet in the air. It'll land and won't even have a bounce. He said, if you throw renegade tires on your LMT with the uh, CI foams, you're getting close to that territory. That's how good mm -hmm. this truck is out of the box. Yeah. The first thing I did whenever I got mine was actually, I dropped it. I did the drop test and it, yeah. it was remarkable for a stock truck. Um, it's, it's, it's pretty crazy. And it's funny. You talk about when you went to Adams, the, the digger shop there and you got to, to drive it. I remember you called me that day, actually. Oh, yeah. Uh, right after it. And you're like, man, you just wait. I and couldn't just, wait for you to get yours. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's I it's wait. funny. The LMT was, I guess we can talk about this now. The LMT was a pretty open secret in the industry. A lot of people knew about it um, because the guys at Horizon who developed the truck are hardcore monster truck people. And that's mm -hmm. important. I think that it shows that it was designed by hardcore RC monster truck people. And that's, the difference i think that i think it makes all the difference in the world that it was designed by people who knew what they were doing it seemed like not that you know not that other trucks haven't been designed by by people who knew what they were doing that's not true but you could tell that the goal here was to have a you know a, finally a truck you could just open the box and rip on yeah and um we're going to talk about a little bit of the durability things i do want to talk about a few things here that is online right now but um, to keep with the class here real quick, what we're going to do is limit it to one person per truck. 
um, because we our race day is already pretty full. And we're if you if you allow two, you're, we're going to have another huge class. And it doesn't really show online here when we post our videos, but our race days are long. They start, you know, John at JB Scale Graphics. He a lot of times he gets the track ready the day before, like the dirt. Yeah, we show up at like 6 a.m., 6 6:30 a.m. Start getting it ready, and our day doesn't end normally until, you know, over the summer. Some of those nights around 6 p.m. in the evening, mm-hmm. and um, depending you know, some, on how many people show up, or I think we had what 109 at one point. Yeah, we weren't even advertising. That's the crazy thing. I know, um, you know, some of you folks out there, I have gotten on us for we don't advertise when the events are. And just FYI, if you ever email us, I'll tell you when the events are. You can trigger King RC at Gmail. Just shoot me an email there or um, Doug at big squid RC.com. If you do that, I'll get it. Um, we weren't publicly advertising because we had so many people. We were trying to figure out logistically, how do we handle this? But we have that now. And um, so anyways, that's why we're going to limit it to one truck per person, two racing brackets. We're actually going to race these for cash, which is, you're not going to see that in the video, but that's going to be fun. Mm-hmm. And Losi is actually, you know, I, I sent them, I told them what we were going to do. And Losi is actually sponsoring this class. They are going to give awards to the top three trucks for the season. And they are going to uh, give out a roller, an LMT roller to the person who wins this. So it should be fun. It's going to be tight racing and, and kind of the genesis of this really. I wanted to do this because I've raced tracks of slash, you know, spec for a long time. And they've always been successful classes, typically, whether it's dirt oval slash, regular slash. And what you can do is, is a very limited tuning, but you can tune them a little bit, like with pinion and some other things. Mm-hmm. It allows the racer to tune, but without having to go out and spend the money on different things. Mm-hmm. And have you raced spec in any other form of RC, Josh? Have you done much spec I racing? I did a, a spec two-wheel drive slash class, and that was years ago whenever mm-hmm. – uh, the old, this was before Trigger King. This was the Illinois Monster Truck Series, which I know you're familiar with. Yeah. Uh, we actually wrapped up our monster trucks, and then I, I borrowed a rental vehicle and would go out to uh, a track middle of nowhere out by Quincy, Illinois. But I felt the experience of a spec class running in this, and uh, I actually finished second in the class. I really I really enjoyed it. I, I, I didn't know as much about it, though, until... Uh, you had mentioned the other day about the, the spec class. So I, st- I actually did read up a little bit on Atraxis slash spec class, and I compare it with very similar to what you have here with this. Uh, very little adjustability, but again, the idea straight out of the box, you can tune it to where you fit or where you think it's going to fit your driving style. Take it to the track and go have fun with it. Yeah, and I think that there's a misnomer, you know, for some people. And I know I'm talking to kind of a short, a small audience here. Um, with this people who kind of were disagreeing with why we allowed even any changes at all a spec class is still a racing class and here's one of the misnomers people think that spec class racing who haven't done it before is for beginners you can a a beginner can do it a little more easily because you don't have to spend the money but it's the spec class racing is never it never usually is a beginner's class because you have people then it's like any racing when you have a really tight box you have the guys who really want to tune and go at it. That's kind of their playground to sort of show, you know, showcase their ability. And same with driving style. So our spec class, I think we're going to have some beginners. I hope we do have some first timers that come out that want to race monster trucks. And hopefully if you're out there watching, you know, you do whatever you want if your club's thinking about doing this. But I would I would recommend doing something similar to this because it, if, if you're going to um, allow, you know, a truck pretty close to box stock you won't have to do very much to it and I think you could attract some new racers who want to try it and I hope that we do attract some racers that try it and that said competition is going to be major dog eat dog in this class because you know all of our other classes I guess retro you have to run the one motor but our other classes guys can make up a lot or a little bit the motor that they use and the you know the and winding we, we do have yeah. a spec motor in our sport modified class but that's still some of the best racing that we have well turns we have turns but we don't have a spec motor specs when you have to well, use you, the one motor so excuse me, yes yes you're right uh in our retro class though we do so we, we do have, have, to have use a spec the axial. Axial motor yes yes um, i i got it mixed up in my head there yeah and uh <laughs> but so the racing is going to be good and really i don't think gearing is going to matter guys that mess with gearing i don't think that's going to be the real secret sauce on these trucks I think that uh, those who learn to tune their differentials, that's going to be, that's going to separate sort of the, you know, the guys really know what they're doing from the, the don't. And out of the box, I really like how it's set up though. 
with that rear end, it's like limited slip. The LMT feels like limited slip, sort of. Um, and I, I dig that. I like how you can tune the truck. That's one of the best parts about it is, you know, my SMT 10, you can put oil in the diffs, but they're not designed really to be tight, no leak. Um, and so I don't even really mess with tuning it. I use a heavy grease in there, but it's not an actual oil. It's not as smooth. And so you do have diffs unloading. And even in a cloud buster, you, a lot of times you'll have the diffs unload. And this truck, you can tune how you want your diffs unload because there are advantages to running a lock differential in the rear. Small, I think, but um, there are times that you do want them. And now with, if you tune your rear, any of the diffs, but if mainly the rear, if you tune the rear tight, you can get that out of the truck, mm. in my opinion. Yeah, I agree with you 100%. This might be the first truck on the market where you can have a locker in it and it really be in a, a little bit of an advantage for you. Small advantage, but still a little bit of an advantage. Uh -huh. I don't believe that you're going to be pulling, uh, like, I'll use a clod buster for an example. If you put a locker in the front of a clod buster, you are literally just going to make one giant circle with this truck. It's not going to help you in the least little bit with the exception of maybe slick concrete. And that's if you nail the absolute perfect pass with the truck. Yes, uh, it's slick concrete is the only way I've ever seen those lockers really work. Yep. Anytime somebody's messed with it otherwise, it's, it's, it's an easy win for the other guy, typically. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's it, one of the biggest things in solid axle monster truck racing. Sometimes it just kind of makes you go, oh, because you see a lot of real trucks out there. I'll use Avenger for an example. Avenger's locked in the front and the rear sometimes. Mm -hmm. And that's when you see Kohler go out there and just cut these amazing donuts. You see the same thing. Um, I'm not sure if Raminator has a locker in the front, but I do know that they've experimented and had a locker in the rear before. Mm -hmm. And you see that truck as well, cutting amazing donuts. This truck is capable of that without rear steering on it. Yeah, I've done it. If it's fun to do that. You, I mean, the steering angle so tight on it that you don't yeah it's not really an issue and i guess i want to address you know one of the things here i'm gonna get to a couple of reader questions because a couple of people we posted on the, the community tab we were going to do this for a show and we asked if you had any questions about or comments about the lmt and we do have some good ones but um the the main thing here is you know i see people talking about well are you going to allow for any kind of a axle brace or an axle modification because i see people online are, are breaking axles mm -hmm. and well, no, the answer is no. I, it's a spec, it's, we're not allowing that. You can, if you want to run stuff, you can run an LMT and mod class with whatever you want. It doesn't matter. Um, exactly. So you do that there, but no, spec class, I don't want to re require that. In my, in my personal experience from my truck and a couple people I know that have them, it hasn't been an issue with the axle. I've seen, again, I know people online are kind of going crazy saying like the truck is worthless without this new aluminum axles or with the machined axles to me i don't i haven't seen that i i'm not i never want to accuse somebody of anything because you know what if they're breaking them you're breaking them i understand your mm -hmm. frustration have i seen that no i haven't really seen the issue with that i know it's also cold outside for a lot of people yeah that doesn't help if and there might be a few people out there running it on uh, let's just say not stock electronics with uh definitely not the recommended battery for the vehicle i yes i know it, yeah those guys run a big voltage i've also seen some of the stuff where the guys are sort of running it like an x max or a, a basher truck thinking you know they, they're not a solid axle truck is different let's just say that very a solid different. axle truck is never going to hold up to the abuse in an independent basher style truck like an arm or a traxxas or you know one of those type of trucks just rarely and i feel like it's i don't know maybe a little bit unreasonable what some people are thinking of it but that's all i can really go off of with that um i, I again i don't know maybe we're going to see these things in a while and the axle starts snapping you know what if that happens we will change the rules in the spec class to allow it but until it happens i don't i don't think it's right to just go changing things like that just because you see some people online are having issues i don't mean to minimize it if you are having an issue you know online but I've had mine out in the cold. I actually been fine jumping it too. Now I'm an experienced RC monster truck racer. And I will say the guys that have driven that I generally ride with or drive with, and we've bashed on ours, they are, and we kind of know how to take the jumps. And, you know, I, I look at it like a real monster truck too. The strongest real monster truck is going to break. <laughs> if you, if you just go out and go ape shit with it, you know, pardon my language. If you just, if you're going crazy with it, it's going to break. Yeah, um, exactly. 
you've seen digger 20 or digger 30 or some of the early later advanced grave digger trucks go out and break a lower link and be out for a little while in some of the competitions that the, those trucks do nowadays uh-huh. it happens it's breakage fix it that's yeah that's how we, you know we kind of view it here let me get into a question here too um because we we did have a this is a really good question this is from tim needs a hobby uh from youtube this came in from youtube there's a couple parts to this he said what are your thoughts on running the LMT roller as a sport mod? Is it too heavy? And maybe if you remove the cage like Doug did in his big squid article. And uh, that's the first part of it. I wrote an article where I show my, my actual truck. I do have a regular Lexan body on it. Um, the other part of this is what are the possibilities of J Concepts coming out with Renegades for the Lozy style wheel? Josh, I'll let you handle one part of this. I want to answer the, answer the J Concepts part first. Um, this is nothing official. I have, let's just say, heard through the grapevine. Uh, it's a pretty good bet you're going to see renegades in this in this and uh, I, I'll just leave it at that so hopefully that helps you there Tim I think you're going to see the renegades in this which the renegades are pretty much the king tire for racing I mean right now they are from all I've seen I, that's um, I'm looking forward to trying the pro lines I am going to try a set I think I, I saw that horizon was going to send me a set of the new um, LMT pro line ones to try which is cool. I'm always cool, you know, to try different stuff. I'll make sure we post something here about it, but um, I'm really excited though, eventually to get some renegades, hopefully on these things, because renegades are just the perfect tread, man. It's the mm-hmm. perfect tread. All right, Josh, let's talk about the sport mod thing though. Um, it's going to be legal. This truck is going to be legal in sport mod, chassis wise, wheel wise, center diff. That's fine. We're going to keep it legal for our sport mod class. The question is, do you want to use it for sport mod though? With a the brush motor there is absolutely not the truck weighs a little bit too much plus the truck is designed for a motor with a five millimeter shaft mm-hmm. and i don't see many 17 turn brush motors out there running a five millimeter motor shaft mm-hmm. i see every single one of them has a three millimeter shaft uh and inside the lmt you actually have spaces in there for where you want to place your pinion uh if you want a 16 tooth if the holes are pre-drilled if you're going to run this in sport mod with a 17 turn motor you're gonna have to file some of those out maybe to actually get the pit get the uh the pitch of the gearing correct with this just so you can adjust your motor and make sure that your pinion is going to connect the right way on here uh i don't see it being a plausible thing to have in sport mod for those those reasons right there the weight is going to hamper it quite a bit uh honestly i wouldn't even recommend clods but the problem is with claw or actually with clods you can have a motor in the front and a motor in the rear you have two motors pushing the truck yes that's your this advantage you do not you have one motor pushing all of this weight that's yep. what makes the smt 10 work so well in the class though well very light truck going to be pushed with one motor but it's going to be equal if not a little bit faster than a clod speed wise because of how much less weight is being pushed and traditionally in our sport mod class, which has the best racing typically, it's just, it's been that way. There's a clod and a shaft truck. They both duke it out and every, it's normally a driver's thing. It's normally not a real advantage. There are certain advantages that each does have, but I don't, nobody really feels there's competitive swing to one or the other. It just depends on what you put in it and how you drive it. I agree. I think the LMT is way too heavy. You're in essence asking, you know, it'd be like putting a small V8 in a real monster truck or something that's naturally aspirated and not blown. To me, that's what it seems like. You would be, it's such I'll, a power. I'll, I'll, I'll do an old school comparison. Everybody remembers the original Wild Hair, which Bob Breen drove. Mm-hmm. For a while, they just had a stock 454 on that truck. Yeah, and it was slow. I remember it was slow just. Is, I think that's what you're going to see with an LMT with just a regular 17 turn motor in it. It's going to be the Wild Hair of our class. Yeah, and I'm not saying somebody won't do it and be successful because we have a lot of good drivers. Mm-hmm. And I don't really know, but I'm, I'm sure as far as like the motor mount, somebody will come up with a plate or something. But I suppose the, the question is yeah, why. Where, where are you going to put a plate in that, though? Well, yeah, yeah. I, listen, so we have scary. guys. We have guys. I never say never with the guys that race with us or the RC Monster Truck community. Somebody will do it and mm-hmm. find a way to do it well. But it's so heavy. I just don't think you're going to see, like you're saying, the LMT, the, uh, sorry, not the LMT, I'm getting confused. The SMT 10 is great in sport mod because it yes. weighs nothing, you know, 
And you don't um, have to modify the SMT10 hardly at all out of the box. All you really got to do is throw a 17-turn motor in it, throw some Renegades on it, and if you want, there you go. Yeah, uh, yeah. There's not, there's not really a lot you have to do with it. Um, the, uh, Ataku Life, another uh, viewer here from uh, YouTube, he asks, will the LMT be a new pro stock class? And I think what he's asking there is... I think he's, I, th I think the spec class answered that question. I think that's what he's asking. And I'm um, sorry, you can leave a comment here. I'll clarify it for you. But I think he's asking is like, is it going to be a spec? Yes, that's what it is. Um, and uh, looking forward to that. And you know, the last thing I'll talk about, there's some talk about the wheels and tires on these things and the question about legality in our classes. Yeah, actually, we I got an example here for you. You've got the LMT wheel and you've got a renegade wheel. This is, this is the difference and this is what people are talking about. Yep, you have the uh, short course style LMT wheel that doesn't have the sidewall roll. Josh, you can talk here again, so it's up on yours. Um, you show the front of that way, you spin them around the front end. Hope you guys can see that there. Yeah, uh, this is kind of rep reminiscent of a Gen 3 BKT tire. This is the stock LMT wheel. Uh, the reason that the backside of the rim is so wide is for to try to give this truck a little bit maybe of a competitive advantage because you see this a lot on short course tires actual monster trucks though and you and i both know this as well as anybody that probably watches this channel have the same size out as they do in the rim is the exact same size all the way around uh, and this to me is what should have been produced on the lmt not knocking them anyway i know they built their truck the way that they wanted to but to me this just looks better there's no, to me, there's no doubt there's it looks a competitive better. advantage either. Yeah. So, I mean, there's the real question. I don't think it looks as good because it, it doesn't look like a real one. I mean, let's yeah. just, there's, I don't, it doesn't look like a real truck. Okay. It, it, it does look rc if you will. Yes. Um, but I don't want to, I, I think it's a bad idea to outlaw it given that it comes with it. And unless there's a very discernible competitive. The one, the one thing I'll say this, and I actually had a discussion with another club about this. Uh-huh. They'd ask my opinion on it. And I said that there should be a grace period that you can, it can outlaw this tire. Mm -hmm. To me, you can outlaw this if you would like it's your decision. But I kind of agreed and thought that a grace period with this tire of maybe three events before they have to upgrade and get, say, the Renegade, or if they would like to go the pro line route to uh, the, the other pro line rim, that's fine. But don't outlaw this out of the box because you will chase away racers. Yeah, I mean, that's tough because how do you know if somebody, if you're talking about outlawing it, like give somebody three events on it, I suppose. I don't know, that'd be tough. I guess for us at Trigger King, I don't, it's just too hectic on a race day. It's got to be either or. I would just ask because given that it does come on it, I would, I hope people at least let's just see what it yeah. does. I'm not saying we'd never outlaw it. We might, if there's a difference, like a real difference to where it just is so much night and day that you have to use them. I don't think that's cool, but I'm good with giving the choice, especially in ProMod. Yeah. It's, you got guys running crawler innovation foams, feather light wheels, and those wheels and tires actually are kind of heavy as they are. Yeah, I will say that this has a CI foam in it, and it's a blue compound tire. This is actually heavier, but it's yeah. also a harder compound. And I believe the rim is actually it weighs a little bit more than. Yeah, the I don't think we have a race compound yet for those, do we? For these? Yeah. No, we do not. Well, now the Proline does have a tire. Proline's compound. coming out with one. Yes, well, the race tires will be here soon enough, and that might change things a little bit. But mm -hmm. right now, it seems like the difference is cosmetic for the most part. Um, that's as far as like that's hardcore. literally my only issue with that tire is the cosmetics of it. Yeah, and yeah. that's. It looks amazing from right here, but when you look in the inside of the tire and you just see this gaping wall in there, to me, that's... It looks that's RC. Yeah, it looks RC. Wall. Like you said, it looks rc and it doesn't look like a scale monster truck. Yeah, so the, anyways, that's kind of what we're going to do, is we're going to allow it, and um, at least the first adventure two. It, well, definitely in the spec class, duh. I'm, of course, yeah. the spec class is going to run this tire. Spec class is the only tire you can run. Yeah, let me let me clarify things. Spec class, that's all you can run. I'm talking about for our pro mod and our, our sport mod class. The tire is going to be legal, technically. Um, we just don't know. There might be a change eventually if it's deemed that we don't want to 
I don't know, for some reason, if it's not cool to do that. So we're just, we're adopting more of a wait and see approach. And the same goes with the center diff. Let's just touch on that real fast here. Uh, the truck does come with a center diff. I know some there's discussion, should a center diff be allowed in racing? Sorry, Josh, you want to talk, the screen will go over to no, you. That's there. fine. I was just pointing out there's a center diff right there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, uh, one thing I will say though, you're talking about the center diff and I hear that there are clubs that want to outlaw it. And my response to that is why? Because the only only thing that I've heard is, oh, well, the real trucks don't have those. Okay, well, outlaw every clod buster in your modified class then as well. Well, that's the dumb part to me. And to me, that makes it actually a non-issue. Yes. Is the clod, okay, because a clod is like the most unscaled thing. You know, the, you have motor on axle. It's one thing if you just have a shaft drive class, I suppose, then you do a little bit more of an argument. But if you're going to run clods with the shaft trucks, I don't know how you with a straight face can... Can, can say no. Really deny that, yes. Yeah, especially because guys can put tunes on the different motors and everything, and Claude just handles so different. And that's how, that's what I've done for years in my trucks. You have a different tune to the motor in the front of the truck than you do the rear in a Pro Mod. Mm -hmm. You want the front to pull a little bit more. It's yeah, it's it. Again, listen, everybody does different stuff, and that's cool. I don't mean to be, you know, I don't want to look down on people like that. My only my real thing here is more of a help hobby thing we have this truck we as rc monster truck guys mm -hmm. we have this truck that's here now and that even if you're going to gripe about the axles or something like you got to say it's a it's an awesome truck out of the box nothing compares to it that's come before it doesn't like as far as capability and everything mm -hmm. and i think it's important that we in the hobby kind of cultivate that a little bit and be careful here because i think it is worth it's worth it. I think there have been trucks that have come out and tried where I don't think it's worth it. I think this is worth the hassle of it. And I know Lozy is in for the long haul here. This truck is something they've been working on for a long time. Oh yeah. It's been, it's been developed for quite some time. Yeah, it, it, it has. And um, I'm hoping to have some of the designers on at one of the, one of our shows here going forward. It'd be fun to have an interview with them to kind of. Oh yeah. That it. would be amazing to get Greg Sopa and some of the guys that were involved in building this. But Kevin Hedmanski. On this particular show with us where we're standing there next to them. Yeah, I would love to, I, I would love to talk to them. I hope we can. So um, that said guys, really that's kind of the episode here. And this is kind of what we're going to be doing going forward here for the most part is picking a topic, a singular topic. And we are going to really go towards that. I will post in advance uh, the topic when it's um, you know when we have them we have a few here that are coming up and let me tell you i'd like to do this show live josh and i would mm -hmm. we hope we can at some point the one problem with doing it live right now is schedule wise to get a lot of people on we can't just do this every night or any night it's kind of problematic so we kind of have to record these at weird times so uh, with our schedules we hope to do some live stuff i hope that during the summer when we start we're out at events josh and i can actually maybe go live the day of the event and do a quick broadcast or something mm -hmm. like that um let me know the feedback too here of course it'd be better if we're in person we would like to do that zoom is just going to have to be what it is uh for the moment but um yeah guys we've got some cool ideas coming up here stay tuned i will post uh, the next show here in a day or so the uh kind of the thing on uh, the topic we've got some fun ones coming up and hopefully get some questions um, from you guys so uh josh you got anything to add here before we take her home and get out of here uh, make sure you go follow josh Rhodes rc racing on Facebook, Josh Rhodes, uh, Josh Dig Rhodes on Instagram. Also, please do keep the rubber side down and shiny side up and follow the Retro Monster Truck Review. Yes, please check out Josh's podcast. Again, um, I'm on one of the ones that's upcoming here. It was a lot of fun to do that one, and it's a great show, a great concept to talk about old school monster trucks like that in the event. So, all right, guys, hey, thank you very much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed episode one here. We're going to try and keep it as regular as we can, and we will see you soon.